I like how the drops of water suspend from clothes pegs clung to my <laughs> mismatched washing lines. Normally they all live in this wee small plastic basket I've got, but I stopped putting them out there a couple of weeks ago and don't really see the point of it anymore. So now they just hang there, day in, day out. This has been my view for the last six months or so. A wee empty rectangle of red brick and worn concrete. And I know all of it with this weird, painful familiarity. The Last Campfire is a game you'll have played before. Mechanically, it brings very little new to the table, but if I'm honest, it made me stop, it made me want to write, it made me want to reach out to friends and family, and it made me stop thinking about just me and my little bubble. In the game, you play a, a wee guy in a colourful sackcloth uh, called an ember, and you're lost in this place between places and this time between time. To your wee pal, all of it is strange, different, unfamiliar, and uncertain, and you set out and are just asked to help people, other wee people like you. I have pals that I'm worried about, some that have been stuck in an unchanging state for a while. They don't have any idea where to go in life or what their route forward looks like. That very clearly is lying heavily on their shoulders. I have other friends as well whose lives have recently changed. Their personal circumstances have altered to the point where the road ahead for them just is completely uncertain. And they thought they knew what their life should be, would be, and now they don't. And that must be confusing and terrifying. The Last Campfire is a game that let me sit back and reflect on those in my life and outside my life. On first glance it probably doesn't seem like it's got any right to do this, it's just a daft wee sack guy running about a forest. And it can seem that there's not much to it, if we're being generous, the story is left open to interpretation. But if we're being honest, the story is slight. But that's okay because it says everything it needs to. So, as your ember guy, you kind of trot about this land, helping other folk like you. They've turned to stone, or become forlorn, as the lassie who narrates the game says. You go to these statues, and as you approach them, the kind of world fades away to darkness around you, and um, a puzzle will appear kind of loosely related to the individual's personal struggle, you know, why they've given up hope, and your goal is to solve this puzzle and therefore help your wee friends. So to get to like the nuts and bolts of it all, um, it's puzzles. Do you like Zelda? Like the old top-down ones? It's like Zelda, with no combat, just, just the wee puzzles. All stuff you've seen before as well, you know, move this block, guide this beam of light, you know the drill. But again, that's okay. It's familiar, cosy, and it's easy as well. Not like easy mode easy, but easy like not having to worry easy. Easy like the choice to help someone you care about easy. So even if it's difficult, you do it. 
you want to do it. It's a no-brainer. Of course you're going to help. They're your friend. I would consider myself an emotional person, but I'm not somebody who cries at things very often. It's not like a big macho man thing. I actually wish I probably did it more and allowed that kind of release. I always kind of feel better for it when I do. And this game didn't make me cry, but it had an impact. And this is because the game helped me understand that it's not enough to want to help. So like, not long after the first part of the game, you've hit this stride, you know, you've helped a few folks, solved a few puzzles, and you're moving on physically, and as far as the game's concerned, like spiritually, emotionally, etc. Then you meet another wee guy. He's cast in stone, trapped in his own insecurity or depression or anxiety or whatever. The same as the others. You've helped others like him before and you feel you could help. You approach him like the rest as if you could help. But he doesn't want help. They just sit there, physically paralysed by their own emotional state, terrified to address what they need to and completely unwilling to take your help. And I know people like that. You probably know people like that. We all know people like that. And so you've only two choices. You can just sit with them in this area and watch them suffer, or you can move on and try and help those that do want your help. And by sitting there, you're not achieving anything. The game isn't progressing, but you're also not progressing. You're stagnating with this person. And so because there are others that do need you and your help, you just have to leave them alone in the dark. I, I don't mind admitting that that hit home for me. And you know the thing about the last campfire is that it feels like no one's chatting about it. You know, there's, there's no talk about it at all. Barely anybody I see discussing it. And after all, why does it matter? Why, why bother? It's just another wee indie game. Another wee unimportant small game. And it is we. Just five hours or so to finish. Which might be a big deal if you're someone who needs a 200 hour open world tick box exercise just to get their money's worth. I suppose I should talk about how the game's puzzles, while initially limited to individual shrine-like challenges, start to bleed into the world itself, increasingly becoming part of the way that you have to navigate through the world in a not-so-subtle way reflecting that your own journey is not without its own set of obstacles to overcome. And the world itself feels alive, but still quiet. There are animals and creatures there who seem wholly unconcerned with your goals and ambitions. You aren't there to save this world. You're simply moving through it, doing what you can for those that you meet along the way. Except, of course, you will then meet those that have tried their best to disengage from this journey, only to help themselves. A group of wee ember guys have chosen to stay in this part called the nest, no longer looking to move forward or looking to help others. In fact, they actively encourage you to do the same as them to leave those in need to their fate and worry only about yourself. And why not? Why not stay where it's safe, where you can be okay? Don't worry about anybody else, just look after yourself and yours. There's a practicality to this, you know, even an ability to a degree. I know that I, in my past, have certainly taken this approach. Even in the face of the undeniable selfishness, that kind of thinking is attractive. I could find myself so easily slipping back into that kind of mode of thinking in my personal life. Where it's about looking after my household and the people that are really close to me and forget everybody else. 
but you know fundamentally that's taking away something, it's missing something, it's wrong. There are people that need your help and that could use your help, even in the smallest of ways, and you can see that. And that's that's the thing about this game. When I when I think about this game and I talk about this game, my mind seems to fluidly shift back and forth between talking about the game itself and talking about my life and life. And it's odd because I think it's a game that could have zero impact if it was released at any other time. It would be written off as this, you know, cutesy puzzle exploration game. A little short footnote and would just disappear into the endless bucket of releases. So it's important that it was released when it was released. The Last Campfire is a game reflective of the here and now. It's a mirror to this post-pandemic existence of uncertainty and isolation, loneliness. At its core, the very centre of this game is a message to continue to hope, continue to help, and to keep moving forward. It's a positive assertion to not be afraid and to not revert in on yourself. To reach out to those that need it, all while understanding just how difficult and frightening that might be. So if that sounds like something that you might need, then I can definitely recommend this game. Even if you're someone who just wants an adventure with Zelda-like puzzles and a nice wee story, I can also recommend it. It's well worth a look. Cheers.